Thanks, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, Duluth, again, for many of us. Uh, I usually come shot from guns out of the box here, but I'm going to start slowly this evening. Um, and by way of a theme for this appearance, I offer the following brief quotation. These words were written in 1850 by the French poet Gautier. So we're getting, getting some culture here. He wrote, to be of one's own time, nothing seems easier, and nothing is more difficult. Keep that in mind as we go through here. Uh, is, is, can everybody hear all right? Volume's good? Good. Uh, I'm going to do three very different poems from three different centuries, and talk a little bit about poetry, and then we'll get it more confusing as we go on from there. First poem uh, uh, tonight is by Alexander Pope, who uh, died in 1744. Uh, two words in here. One is paternal, which means really primogenitor, meaning the eldest child inherits all the property of the father. And the second one is uh, steel, which means uh, to slip away unperceived. This is short. It's entitled On Solitude. Happy the man whose wish and care a few paternal acres bound, content to breathe his native air in his own ground. Whose herds with milk, whose fields with bread, whose flocks supply him with attire, whose trees in summer yield him shade, in winter, fire. Blessed, who can unconcernedly find hours, days, and years, slide soft away in health of body, peace of mind. Quiet by day, sleep by night, study and ease together mixed, sweet recreation and innocence, which most does please with meditation. Thus, let me live, unseen, unknown, thus unlamented, let me die. Steal from the world, and not a, soul, not a stone tell where I lie. Now that's not normally the way I start one of my shows, but uh, I, it's part of my devious plan here. Pope, Pope uh, Alexander Pope, incidentally, was re uh, respected in his day as a technically innovative poet, uh, he also became a noted man of letters, uh, critical of the shallowness of the contrived structure of British society. Our, uh, our next tale is in a lighter vein. It was written by an Irish author who died 1872. Uh, during his life, his name was Charles Lever. He published over 30 novels. Uh, and incidentally, I was sensitive to uh, some of the particulars of this tale, but I was assured by some of my feminine confidants out there that it would be well received. The poem is entitled The Widow Malone. Did you hear of the Widow Malone O'Hone who lived in the town of Athlone alone? Oh, she melted the hearts of the swains in them parts. So lovely the Widow Malone O'Hone, so lovely the Widow Malone. Of suitors she had a full scar or more, and fortunes they all had galore in store, from the minister down to the clerk of the town. All were courting the Miss Widow Malone, oh, and all were courting the Widow Malone. But so modest was Mrs. Malone, twas known no one e'er could see her alone, oh, and let them ogle and sigh, they could ne'er catch her eye. So bashful the Widow Malone, oh, and so bashful the Widow Malone. Till when Mr. O'Brien from Clare, how queer, tis little for blushing they care down there, put an arm round her waist, gave ten kisses at least, oh, says he or my Molly Malone, my own, says he or my Molly Malone. And the widow, they all thought so shy, <laughs> my eye, never thought of a simper or sigh, for why? But Lucius, says she, since you've made now so free, you may marry, you'll marry Malone, oh, hon. you may marry, you'll marry Malone. There's a moral contained in my song, Not Wrong, 
and one comfort, it's not very long, but strong. If for widows you die, learn to kiss, not to sigh, for they're all like the widow Malone or Hohen. Oh, they're very like Mistress Malone. Charles Lever, ladies and gentlemen. Um, turning next to the United States uh, in the 19th century, uh, I'm taking a radically different term in, in this poem as well. It's entitled, How Big Was Alexander? Uh, a couple of words, uh, the word or the phrase training day is mentioned in this, which was the day militias periodically were required to drill or do maneuvers. Um, Abdul, A-B-D-E-L, Young was the name of one of the characters in the poem. And the poem refers to the siege of Tyre in T-Y-R-E uh, in 332 B.C. Uh, Tyre was on the uh, southern coast, uh, Mediterranean coast of Lebanon. Um, I learned about this, this attack, this siege in grade school. I know I did, and I'm, but I ask people now, where's Tyre? And people, they don't know where Tyre is. Uh, it was a Phoenician city of 40,000 on the Mediterranean coast, as I said. Uh, some women and children were to escape before the attack began. Uh, so the city flees to a uh, island fortress that is five-eighths of a mile offshore with a 150-foot wall. This is rather interesting to me, and pardon me while I give you the background. Some of you like background, I know, I've, I've been told. Uh, anyway, Alexander, wanting uh, retribution, uh, blockaded the island for seven months, and in an attempt at negotiating, uh, the Phoenicians killed Alexander's envoys and threw their bodies off of the wall in view of Alexander's troops. That was not the right thing to do. Alexander builds a causeway. Uh, two meters deep, 200 feet wide, and a kilometer long, five-eighths of a mile long. It takes five months of labor, probably a lot of dead donkeys, and probably a lot of dead slaves to make that ditch. Uh, he finally lays siege with two 160-foot high siege towers. Anyway, the importance of all this is how dramatic it is. After five months, Alexander and his Macedonians triumph. 6,000 defenders were killed in battle, 2,000 crucified on the beach, 30,000, many, uh, many of them women and children, were sold into slavery. And of course, not yet sated with death, Alexander then heads south and attacks Gaza. And I give you that historical background to make sense of this poem. <clears throat> How Big Was Alexander by Elijah Jones. How big was Alexander, Pa, that people call him great? Was he like old Goliath tall, his spear a hundred weight? Was he so large that he could stand like some tall steeple high, and while his feet were on the ground, his hands could touch the sky? Oh no, my child, about as large as I or Uncle James. Twas not his stature made him great, but greatness of his name. His name so great, I know tis long, but easy quite to spell, and more than half a year ago I knew it very well. I mean, my child, his actions were so great, he got a name that everybody speaks with praise, that tells about his fame. Well, what great actions did he do? I want to know it all. Why, he it was that conquered Tyre, and leveled down her wall, and thousands of her people slew, and then to Persia went, and fire and sword on every side, through many a region sent. A hundred conquered cities shone with midnight burnings red, and strewed over many a battleground, a thousand soldiers bled. Did killing people make him great? Then why was Abdul Young, who killed his neighbor training day, put into jail and hung? I never heard them call him great. Why, no, twas not in war, and him that kills a single man, his neighbors all abhor. Well, then, if I should kill a man, I'd kill a hundred more. I should be great and not get hung like Abdul Young before. 
Not so, my child, twill never do. The gospel bids be kind. Then they that kill and they that praise the gospel do not mind. You know, my child, the Bible says that you must always do to other people as you wish to have them do to you. But Pa, did Alexander wish that some strong man would come and burn his house and kill them too and do as he had done? Did everybody call him great for killing people so? Well now, what right had he to kill? I should be glad to know if one should burn the buildings here and kill the folks within. Would anybody call him great for such a wicked thing? How big was Alexander by, uh, by uh, Elijah? I'll get it wrong, Elijah Jones. Um, Thank you. Uh, the Innocence of Childhood. Now the reason I've done those diverse poems is, is to point out that uh, although there's a, there may be a lot of different styles of poetry, a author that I have referred to before, a poet who published a book in 1947 called In Defense of Reason, said notwithstanding 2,500 years of Western literature going back to the Greeks, all of it can be subsumed into three categories. The first he called hedonistic or that which gives us pleasure. We just like to hear some stories and there'll be some of those in this, just give me a little time. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean happiness. Well, uh, reading Hamlet may be pleasurable in some way, but it's not a happy tale in the end. A lot of dead bodies on, on scene five, act five. Uh, the second category is didactic, or poems that teach us something. And I think that last poem would have fallen in that category. And the third and now dominant form this poet mentions uh, was romanticism. And so, of course, the question is, what is romanticism? And for the sake of brevity, I cheated and went to the internet. And the first, uh, the first definition I saw, I thought was as good as any, a uh, little shallow, which more will come of that. And it said, a movement in, the, in arts and literature that originated in the late 18th century emphasizing inspiration, subjectivity, and the primacy, here's the key, the primacy of the individual. Uh, but because this definition I don't think will do romanticism in the artistic sense, justification, I am going to do a romantic poem. Uh, the author was Wendy Zhu. I saw her, it's spelled X-U, by the way, and I think it's supposed to be pronounced Chu. Um, she uh, was born in China. She was raised in Iowa, got her baccalaureate degree in Iowa. Then she attended the University of Massachusetts at, at Amherst for graduate school. She's in Poetry Magazine. She's in the New York Review, unlike the live bard, but she is a bona fide poet. So uh, I want you to see what the market will bear nowadays. This uh, was published in 2017. It's entitled The Years, and if you keep that in mind, you might hang on to a little of this. This is only five sentences long. And I, but incidentally, I had to restructure it because of course, poetry, poetry is written in sentences, written in lines, so you're supposed to kind of juggle and, anyway. The Years. Such were they, a dumb stuffed thing to say, if truth is, we all grow old unobserved. Limbs flail only halfway up a flight. Where does dark begin settling my little bones? I dream and do love to have them. Blue fish in a lake. My head more tipped up than down under damp earth. Some days, others like deer from the shot, peeled back. How I find trees dressed in wild green light. The years come unstitched a face, saddled as one would a heavy beast for walking. Likely I became then a member of heaven, put up. The years come and reaching their long, wet hands. There will be a test at the end of the show for you to tell me what in the hell this means. 
that was only five sentences. So when I start doing a presentation like this and I come across that, and the question that I, I have an answer for, but maybe you don't, but I thought I would ask the question, if I were in your shoes, where does all this come from? And uh, I'm going to, to give you, everything's in five tonight. So that was five sentences. I have five sentences here from uh, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, who is uh, notorious or infamous for being one of the contributors to the, to the Romantic movement. And, uh, okay, five sentences. Rousseau, quote, I am commencing an undertaking, oh, this is from his book Confessions, late in his life, and he's trying to explain himself to the world. He says, I am commencing an undertaking hitherto without precedent, and which will never find an imitator. I desire to set before my fellow beings the likeness of a man in all the truth of nature, and that man, myself, myself alone. I know the feelings of my heart, and I know humanity, and I am not made like any of those I have seen. I venture to believe that I am not made like any of those who are in existence. If I am not better, at least I am different as nature has acted rightly or wrongly. Now this is a big orientation of the self and his relationship to the world. And eventually this sentiment in the next century works its way to America. 